Hi everyone. Um, in uh, this video, we're going to take a look at graphing deeper level meaning data. Um, uh, and this is probably, well, this is one of the highest levels of um, data analysis that you can do on a classroom um, data set, but also one of the most useful levels of analysis that you can do on a data set. Uh, again, it's our same data set that we've been working on, first graders, pre-assessment, high frequency work. Um, and in the previous video where we looked at question level data, we took a look at um, the number of errors in each of the words. Um, but in terms of what I'm interested in, um, I am not necessarily interested in teaching all of these words in the same way. Um, I've noticed that there's some differences um, in the ways that I would teach these words. And so for this level of analysis, I'm interested in looking at um, the uh, decoding method, okay? The, the spelling rules that you need to understand to be able to um, write these words using conventional spelling. And so I've categorized the words. Um, so I've noticed that an, i, in, and no all follow typical decoding patterns um, and have fewer than three words. So we have an initial sound and an end sound. I is a little bit of a weird one, but it's, it kind of falls in the category of the ones that kids get most quickly. Um, had, her, and then are essentially CVC words um, with a short vowel in the middle, then being a little bit of the exception because um, uh, TH isn't a single consonant, but by first grade, uh, children should be associating TH with the th, th with the, hard to say on camera, but you understand what sound I'm going for. Um, like and take uh, both follow the bossy E or the magic E or the silent E rule, depending upon what you call it um, in your classroom. Um, but the rule that you put an E at the end that you can't hear and it makes the vowel uh, take its long form, or as we say to many children, the bossy E makes the vowel say its name. Um, they follow that, that pattern. My, is, the, and said essentially are not decodable using um, uh, strategies that most beginning of the year first graders have learned. Um, these are high frequency words that children just have to memorize. Um, and memorization looks different than some of the other strategies. And then now and down both have that O-W, that um, combination making the owl sound. Um, uh, and they're spelled the same way. Um, so that uses the same sort of spelling rule. So then what I've done is I've totaled up the number, number of errors for the rule, not for the individual words, but for the rule. So in this case, I added the number of errors for an, i, in, and no, and got 10. You can see four plus two plus two plus two is gonna be 10. For this instance, we have to deal with percentages um, because the number of words in each rule category are not the same. So if we were to compare 10 and 18, that would be unfair because it was 10 errors out of 80 possible tries across the whole classroom, four words, 20 kids, 80 tries, um, versus the CVC words where it was 18 errors out of 60 tries, not out of 80 tries. So you can see that I've done that math. Um, all the way down, and I've also um, calculated the percent um, correct, uh, sorry, the percent, percent incorrect um, for each of the rule categories. And as you can see, in terms of application, right now, without graphing anything, um, I can see that if I only have time to review one rule, I ought to spend my time on now and down. Um, more than half of the class made an error um, in one or both of those words. Um, and so that is the pattern that is showing the most need for instructional time and improvement. So going back to my unit, um, in those adult directed times where I have opportunity to review high frequency words, I'm not gonna spend my time just drilling the children on each of the words. I'm gonna stop and review the rules that students are having the most issue with. 
Um, so I'm gonna start with now and down. And if I have time for another um, uh, discussion, it's gonna be about that bossy E or magic E or silent E rule for like and take. Um, uh, and knowing the unit that I'm planning, um, I'm going to take my, is, the, and said, and on the child-directed activities where they are going to, or more center activities, where they're going to practice um, lots of repetition um, and t quick remembering of words, I'm going to put those words there because it doesn't make a lot of t a sense for me to take my instructional time to drill the children, right? I'm gonna build um, memorization practice, which is essentially just drilling um, the number of times that you see it and associate it, the more likely it is to stick in your head that that says my. Um, there may be particular children that you need to focus on just identifying the first letter, connecting it with the first sound that you hear, um, and that would be appropriate with those, but you can't really sound them out. You have to memorize them. So I'm going to focus my um, center activities around those words, whereas my review, I'm going to spend my time on now and down, and then if I have time on like and take because that's gonna hit the most frequent errors, which is going to cause, uh, theoretically, if I am uh, using high quality instruction and curricular strategies connected to my kids, it is going to uh, initiate a specific improvement um, that will have the biggest impact on my class as a whole. Um, I could graph these using a bar graph, either a vertical bar graph or a horizontal bar graph, um, uh, which Word calls a column and a bar. Um, but since we're dealing with percentages of a whole, what I'm going to do is actually um, show you how to do a pie chart. Um, uh, it's a good option um, in uh, this situation. But since we have one, two, three, four, five categories, if we were to show all of this data in visual form, which you wouldn't need to, okay, but if you really were to show all of it, we're gonna have five side-by-side -side, um, uh, pie charts. Uh, but for the time being, let's just take now and down um, and create a pie chart. So we're gonna insert chart just like we've done before, and this time we're gonna pick pie. There's all sorts of different options. I find that this piece of the pie and the bar of the pie can be very difficult to make um, work the way that you want them to. Um, uh, but the donut, the regular pie, the 3D pie, they're all um, good choices. We're just gonna do a regular pie um, for just a moment. Um, and then we are going to do our, Okay, we're gonna do correct, and we're gonna do incorrect. Okay, and we're doing O W words. Okay, um, and because word is smart, you can use either the numbers or the percentages. It's going to calculate them all as a percent of a whole um, when it's making a pie chart. So I'll show you, I could just use the numbers. I went down. Okay, so the incorrect is 23, um, and the correct is 7, which gets us to 30, is 17. Yes. Okay, and we don't need these. We can just delete them. Okay, so we can see for the OW words that we have uh, the incorrect is in the orange and the correct is in the blue. So we can see that the um, in the orange case, um, we have more than half of our class um, that struggled with this. Okay, I'm going to show you an, a way to include even more detail. So we're gonna insert another pie chart. Again with the pie. Again, uh, no, in this case, we're gonna have more than two categories. Um, and this time we're gonna use um, bossy E. Bossy E words. Okay, and then we're gonna start with correct. 
and incorrect. No, we're going to start with correct. Okay, so in bossy E words, we had 17 incorrect, which means we had 23 correct. Interesting, the sort of inverses of each other. So 23 are correct. Okay, now I'm gonna go up here and take a look at the incorrect. So we know we have 17 incorrect, but now I'm curious which mistakes led to an incorrect. Okay, and if I take a look at my chart, I see one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of these words miss the E. So we're gonna do incorrect, missing E. Okay, and I can just move this over so we can see. Okay, and that's nine. Okay, what other patterns do we have here? Um, let's see. Okay, I have a pattern of unanswered. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then it looks like I have a pattern with one child of um, first sound, only first letter. Um, and that's two. Okay, we need to get to 17. Um, and the other two are not a pattern. I've got one with a missing middle vowel and one with a, a wrong um, consonant, a CK um, inversion, which makes a ton of sense. They sound exactly the same. So we're just going to call this incorrect. Other, okay, and that's two. So nine plus eight is 17. Okay, now if I come down here, now not only do I have the um, correct versus incorrect, okay? I also have what is incorrect about them, okay? Uh, we can see the percentage of students that made mistakes. One of the things that I like to do, if you double click, you will always open the formatting um, options on the right, is that I like to, um, keep my oranges and um, uh, blues if I'm doing two broader sections. Um, and so I'm actually gonna change these colors to all be shades of orange um, so that if I'm looking at them side by side, I can tell that like all of these are incorrect and this is the correct section. Again, this is a super high level data um chart um and uh i'm sorry high level is not the right word i don't mean high level in terms of broad i mean deep level um this is a super deep level graphic here to help you sh um, see not only what percentage of students in the class are struggling right with this particular um strategy um but also the kinds of mistakes that are most prevalent Okay. Um, in this case, it's the, the mistake that's most prevalent is students wrote the word without the E, which makes a ton of sense because they can't hear the E. Again, this would be corrected by reviewing that bossy E rule and helping children understand that when they hear that long vowel sound, when they hear the vowel saying its name, that um, there's often a silent E at the end of the word because the E is what makes the vowel say its name. Um, whereas uh, you also see you have a pretty high percentage of unanswered um, and as we've talked about previously uh, when children opt out of participating in any assessment either the broader assessment or an individual prompt um, we actually don't know anything um, and we need to figure out what is going on did they not answer because they were confused did they not answer because they were overwhelmed did they not answer because they were not feeling well did they not answer because they were just tired of the activity um, do they not answer because they don't know where to start? Um, there's a lot of reasons why a student might not answer. Um, and so that slice of the pie usually indicates we need more data. 
as you can see, when you're looking at something like this, the specificity of application um, in relation to instructional strategies is so much deeper than that broad, like how many students met the learning objective um, kind of analysis uh, that we did in the first video. I hope these are helpful. Thanks.